Well, this summer, a pretty shocking sight. 12 blocks south of here, a jolly green giant introducing Midtown Manhattan to the pride of Portland, Oregon, and to Oregon Ducks football. Joey, I promise it's the last time we'll show that billboard. That's just one 10-story reason why perhaps Joey Harrington had to perform this season under more pressure and scrutiny than any player. But then again, no one could ever put more pressure on Joey than Joey. He is driven, he's emotional, this guy's stomach is churning from August to January. But between the lines on Saturday, he becomes Joey the General, the commander. Confidence in crunch time. It radiates, absorbed by teammates, who know when number three's got the look. It is trust well-earned with work ethic, then cemented with superb performance under pressure and keen sense of the ticking clock. Here goes Harrington, throwing, touchdown, Oregon. Harrington's big arm delivers the deep or demanding throws the Ducks' scheme requires. His secret, nimble, instinctive footwork. The Northwest native laughs off the wind and wetness most QBs dread. Against Oregon State, third and long, 395 double post, a strike down the middle, defining moment in the game-winning drive, a Harrington signature. With 74 career touchdowns, he's among the top producers in Pac-10 history, doing it in far fewer starts, with a record of 24 wins, three losses. Joe, Joe, Joe. November 14, 1978. Len Casanova sent us a letter of congratulations when Joey was about two weeks old. And it was written in kind of that recruiting language. Hoping to hear from you in about 17 years. If you're a Harrington, you're a quarterback. You grow up with the football in your hand. Joey used to be my son. Now I'm his father. Which is OK. John was a senior when I was a freshman. He was a competitor, wasn't a real big guy, but fought hard. Joey's a lot bigger. He's about six inches taller than his dad, but I think the scrambling ability and the heart set an example for his son. Dad's my role model. I've learned more than I even realized from my father. If I can be like my dad when I'm older, that would be the greatest compliment in the entire world. Dad and my family especially has always been very football, football, football. Mom was always very, I guess, adamant that we have something else in our lives. So, uh, you know, i got to thank Mom for that. <laughs> now, family is so important. The Harrington family takes a bus to each Oregon home game. Dozens of relatives and some friends. And Bernie Harrington, Joey's granddad, one of those guys, he, he fought in the Pacific in World War II, heard from some of his old Navy buddies. They'd seen his famous grandson on TV. Hadn't heard from some of these guys in more than a half century. Just one more reason to treasure a famous grandson. Well, Michelle is with the general of the Joe Inkty Harrington Family Bus Brigade. <laughs> That's right, John Harrington, Joey's father, is joining us. You do drive that bus. Um, when you saw that piece and you hear your son say something as poignant as, if I could grow up to be what my father is, that would be the greatest compliment I could ever have, what does that do to you? Well, it certainly strikes a chord. Yeah, it, um, it makes it all worthwhile. It really does. And I think uh, my wife Valerie and I said a long time ago that if he took, never took another snap, we'd be extremely proud of him for what he's done to this point in his life. Well, he gives you a lot of credit for having taken the pressure off. We saw the billboard earlier and all the, the Heisman <coughs> hype that came at the beginning of this season, the national championship talk. And he said, you know, I was able to enjoy college this year because my dad took the burdens off me. Give us some insight. What were some of the things you did to help? Well, I think the most important thing for Joe was that he just really wanted to be a college senior. And I think that was extremely important to all of us. And um, uh, I think it's important to realize that these are just kids that are playing uh, the college game. Uh, they're big and strong and fast kids, but they're still kids. And so we tried to do everything we could as a family to let him focus on being a college student and a football player at the University of Oregon and keep a lot of the the pressure of the people who would like to be a maybe a little closer part of that than we would like until maybe a little later maybe a week after the last bowl game well obviously when your son is so grateful you can can take that as a job well done thanks for joining us and right now joey is with kirk well joey it's been talked about all year to the point where i'm sure you're you're well tired of it let's one last question about the billboard was it an enjoyable ride to get here and and did you feel pressure to try to live up to all that hype that was created with the billboard it was fun 
I mean, I'll tell you right now, it, it was a blast. How many people can say they had a chance to see themselves 10, feet, 10 stories tall in downtown Manhattan? You know, something you can, you can tell your grandkids. But, uh, you know, I, I love the pressure. That, that's why I play college football. That's why I play this game. Put, you know, put the pressure on my back. Put the ball in my hands. I want to perform, you know, under that microscope. And uh, so I think it just kind of added to my whole senior season. I talked to you all year about the Oregon State game. And, and after the game last year, you got him back home in Eugene. Can you put into words what it meant to walk off that field in Autzen Stadium the last time as a winner against Oregon State? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Growing up in the state of Oregon and knowing that I'm most likely going to spend the, uh, the remainder of my life there. I've made a, you know, a pact with some of my buddies to move back to the same neighborhood. I can go home knowing that my senior year, I beat Oregon State and nobody can take that away from me. I, I, the last time I, I went out, I won. I walked off the field a winner, so uh, you know, I, I've got bragging rights for the rest of, it, for the rest of, my, rest of my life. It, probably as much as any athlete that I've ever had a chance to get to know, you it just flat out enjoy college football. Not only your team and your conference, but all across the country. You enjoy the whole college experience. What is it about the college experience that you've enjoyed the most? That's tough. Um, you know, we, <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, number one, I love playing with the team. I love being part of that family. I love being in Austin Stadium. Uh, I know Lee says it's the loudest crowd, you know, person for person in the country. Um, I, I love going to the basketball games. We, we've got a group, the, the Matt Court Mullets. We sit in the third row of the student section and kind of lead the lead the crowd. Uh, it's just a fun, young, friendly atmosphere in college. You know, you get a chance to. Uh, really live with, you know, I don't want to say without responsibilities, but it's a chance to, to be young and learn about yourself and, and hang out with your friends. I live with five of my best friends in the world, and, you know, it's a chance that, that doesn't come around very often. Well, it's been a treat for all of us to follow you at Oregon. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Chris? You know, Kirk, it's a high compliment, too, and that opponents in the Pac-10 had to game plan around giving the ball back to Joey and Oregon late. That's how much they feared his clutch ability. A UCLA game is an example of that. Well, one guy can certainly game plan with the best of them. He doesn't know fear either. Steve Spurrier won the Heisman in 1966. Coach Danny Werfel of the Heisman. Third